speaking directly with you, Robin, or, or is no, he speaking with Sam? Right? Gut during the first few weeks of life, you didn't develop allergies later on. Sci-fi case on my desk that I've ever had. Uh, we have created the first software that allows any machine to learn like humans and animals do. And to put that in perspective, you can imagine a, a newborn giraffe on the savannah or a newborn baby. Uh, they enter the world with very little information about the surrounding world. They don't even know their body. <laughs> but they have a superpower. They're able to figure things out from scratch. There's no billion dollar data center in the background. There's no pre-training on massive amounts of data. There's no offline simulations. But we were able to figure things out by interacting with the environment. Our technology enables machines to learn in exactly the same way. This, this breakthrough didn't happen overnight. Uh, this is based on more than 30 years of uh, contrarian neuroscience research. So our lab at Lund University, they know more of the mechanisms that allow learning to happen in biology than anyone else. And what we have done over the last four or five years is to translate those mechanisms into software. So instead of learning on prior data, we allow any agent to learn through interactions with the real world in real time. In a sense, we're not talking about today's AI versus tomorrow's AI. Uh, I see this as the difference between machine learning and biological intelligence. So what we are doing here is the next inflection point in AI, the next S-curve. Uh, what we want to show is that machines can have genuine digital intelligence to learn new things and to solve problems that they've never seen before, just like humans and animals can. That learns autonomously, the same way humans and animals do, by interacting with the world. There's no pre-training, no extensive simulations. We use the same fundamental principles that guide all intelligent creatures. This isn't the next generation of artificial intelligence. It's the first generation of genuine intelligence. And it's just the beginning. Right now, Luna is like a headless chicken. Uh, so we tell her to stand. She has a target height and a balance that she wants to reach, but she has no idea how to do it. She autonomously figures out how to control her body in the environment, and she learns through those interactions. That's her input to the system. So, in a way, she is refining her behavior in that environment. So, once she has learned to stand and balance on one terrain, say a flat surface, 
without going offline to retrain and say, hey, wait a minute, we didn't teach you everything about the real world. There is actually boulders also. Now you're ready to go. She can autonomously learn how to adapt in those new terrains, be it boulders or ice. If you want to send a robot to Mars to build habitats for future generations, you can't do it with pre-trained models. It's impossible to, to train them on everything that might happen when, while they're there. They need to be able to figure things out and to experiment on that, in that environment. So this is the technology that will allow any agent to do such exploration.